Good morning. My name is Mark Welsh. I'm the pastor here at Polk Street United Methodist Church. I'm so honored that you chose to worship with us. It's my prayer and all of our prayer that you would connect with God in a special way as together we worship the Lord in music, in word, and in deed. So I pray God's blessings on you this morning as together we lift up the name of our Lord. We do have some exciting news. We are going to be offering another live online Bible study going into August, and we plan to continue doing this. We've had a lot of wonderful feedback from you guys, and we wanted to thank you for that. But Margie is going to go over and introduce the titles and the subject matter around the next six possibilities for our live stream Bible studies. Um, and so you're going to get to vote, but you can go over to our Facebook page and there's a banner pinned to the top and it says vote through Facebook Messenger. You can click on the messenger and just put one through six, whatever your choice is, and all the choices are listed there. So we will be getting those in real time and looking at those throughout the week. So Margie, if you wanna introduce the uh, subjects, go for it. Okay. Uh you all have had to uh, study with us and hope you've been happy doing that through the Gospel of Mark. But we would like to be able to do a study that you are really interested in. So we have six topics, as Cub said, that we want you to think about and vote on. The first one is called Campfire Stories. Think about being around your fire pit on the patio or being around a campfire when you're out camping and stories being told. And that, uh, that topic will cover various parables that Jesus shared with the disciples and with his followers. The next topic is Genesis 3. That is a uh, study of Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3, where you can learn the whole Bible and how to read it easier through understanding chapters 1, 2, and 3. The, other, the next topic is questions from God. In the Old Testament and the New Testament, there are questions that God asks uh, various people and that Jesus asks various people. And so uh, that would be a study of, the, of several of the questions that are asked by God and Jesus for us to answer. The next topic is, is God of wonders. How we marvel, how we wonder as we look and go about our lives and in the world and see, try to understand God's plan for our lives as we see it in the world. The next topic is red letters. You know, some of you have Bibles that what Jesus says is in red letters. And so we would study those things that are in the red letters in the New Testament. And the last topic is only human. Um, we would look at real life stories that match some of the miracle stories in the Bibles, uh, such as the feeding of the 5,000. How, how do we act out that miracle as we go about our lives? So think about them, look at them, and cast your vote. Thank you. Welcome to worship. We're glad you're here today. If you'd like to register your attendance today, and we'd like, whether you're here or online, to just go to psumc.com, and the very first thing you're going to see is an orange button to register attendance. And if you would do that, we'd appreciate that very much. 
I got uh, one from Ohio and wrote her a note, and she was very thankful. And she actually said, I tuned in to watch Antonio sing a solo. So that was great. Also, take a look at your insert. You're going to see that we are trying to raise funds to buy school supplies for San Jacinto Elementary School, and we do that every year. And instead of you buying them yourselves, if you uh, above and beyond your regular giving, if you'd like to give a donation and mark school supplies, we'll make sure we order those and get them delivered over to the school. Have you said a good word about the Lord Jesus Christ to anyone this week? Or have you invited someone to worship with you either here in the sanctuary or online. This reminds us of the Lord's great commission in Matthew 28, go make disciples of all nations. Let us pray. Lord, we're thankful to be in your midst today, and thank you, God, for the rain that you've sent us, and pray for continued rain to come upon our dry land. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, even when we're unfaithful. Thank you, God, for the gift of your son, Jesus. Help us to honor him in every way in our worship today. Let our hearts be connected to you. Let us be renewed in your presence. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please stand as you are able and follow along for our call to worship. O God, you divided the waters of chaos at creation. In Christ you still storms, calm the waters, and raise the dead. Tame the storms of life that seem out of control, and all the forces that scare us by their fury. Help us in good times and in distress to trust your mercy and yield to your power now and forever. Amen. And now if you'll join in the affirmation of faith as printed in, your, in our bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
much. Good morning, everybody. It is good to see your smiling, happy faces. Yes. I'm glad you all could join us. And thank you, uh, Polk Street Kids, who are joining us online. And um, so I want you to imagine this. You are laying in your bed. It's, you're in a sound sleep. It's quiet. you got your favorite blanket with you. you got your favorite stuffed animal with you, sleeping soundly. And then all of a sudden, you hear, boom, crack. <gasps> you startle. You wake up. You quickly throw off your covers from your bed. You jump out. You go running down to your mommy and daddy's room. You jump up into their bed, and you cuddle up underneath their arms. And immediately, oh, you feel safe and secure. There's a storm outside, but whenever you are with your mommy and daddy, you feel so much safer, right? Well, Jesus wants us to feel that way with him, and we can feel that way with him. And you know that the disciples, even they had to learn a lesson like this. They were on a boat during a storm with Jesus on the boat, and they got scared. Jesus calmed the storm, and they learned a lesson on faith that they needed to trust him and that Jesus would keep them safe and secure. And you know, so the inevitable is coming, okay? So whenever you go back to school, you may be a little bit nervous because you know that mom and dad are not going to be there with you. But you can pray to Jesus and ask him to comfort you, and he will. Or sometimes we have friends that move away, and that makes us sad. But Jesus is there to comfort us, and he will always be our friend too. So remember, no matter what the storm is in life, Jesus is there to comfort us just like our mom and dad are there to comfort us and wrap their arms around us and make us feel safe. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, Thank you for always having a safe and protective arms to comfort us in all our storms. Amen. First Thessalonians says, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you and for me in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for this day that you've made. Help us to rejoice and be glad in it. You are the giver of all good things, and we thank you for each and every blessing poured out on us from above. We pray that during the service today, we might truly die to our pride, our agendas, our selfishness, and truly rise and live in Christ. Help us with your spirit to serve you in the world as we share your love, grace, and forgiveness with those around us. Breathe into us your breath, O God, and wake up your church to serve you in the world. Lord, in the midst of all that's going on today, we forget sometimes that other tragedies are happening around us. We pray for the over 1.8 million new cancer diagnoses and for the more than 600,000 cancer deaths during 2020 in the U.S. We pray for the more than 600,000 babies who will not have a chance to be born this year due to death by abortion in the United States. We pray for the more than 850,000 cardiovascular disease-related deaths during 2020 in the U.S. We know that there are many ways that people are losing their lives in this nation. We also know that the way to eternal life is your Son, Jesus, through His sacrifice on a cross for the forgiveness of our sins. That's why we are gathered today as the body of Christ, whether in person, online, or through television. We worship you and thank you for the greatest gift of love ever known. Be with Pastor Mark this morning. Give him words to speak. 
so we may be hearers and doers of your word on this day and in the coming week. We pray all these things in the strong name of Jesus, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Two months is too little They let him go They had no sudden healing To think that providence would Take a child from his mother While she prays is appalling Who told us we'd be rescued what has changed and why should we be saved from nightmares? We're asking why this happens to us who have died to live. It's unfair. This is what it means to be held. How it feels when the sacred is torn from your life. And you survive This is what it is To be loved And to know That the promise was When everything fell We'd be held This hand is bitterness We want to taste it Let the hatred numb Our sorrow the wise hand opened slowly to lilies of the valley and tomorrow. This is what it means to be held, how it feels when the sacred is torn from your life and you survive. This is what it is to be loved and to know that the promise was when everything fell, we'd be held. If hope is born of suffering, if this is only the beginning, can we not wait for one hour watching for our Savior? Thank you, Brooklyn. I don't think that's what I'm supposed to be saying, but thank you. I think we all enjoyed that. Um, 
please join me in the offertory prayer as printed in the bulletin. God of grace and mercy, we offer our gifts to you this day, knowing that it is your love and presence that has sustained us through all our difficult days. We know there have been days when fear and anxiety have gotten the better of us, and we have needed the reminder Paul gave in this epistle to the Romans. If God is for us, who is against us? Help us to live as Christ calls us, to share what we have and show love and compassion as Christ taught us. We boldly pray in the name of Jesus our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will be exceeding glad. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will be exceeding glad. 
Please remain standing as we read our scripture today found in Mark 4, verses 35 and 41, or through 41. That day, when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was, in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, good morning. It's such a joy to be with you here in worship, whether you are at home or whether you are in our sanctuary. God is with us, my friends. And we are glad to praise the Lord with you, worship the Lord. And as I think about being in here, and as I think about many of the ministers who have been here, one of my favorite memories of a guy named Burt Palmer, who used to be a pastor here, is when I, I played golf with him in a four-man scramble. I'm not a very good golfer, but I love playing golf when I can. And so we were playing golf, and it was a, a par three area. It was a four-man scramble. It was a tournament for a, a worthy cause. And the other three pastors hit, and they hit pretty good. But it was a hot and steamy day in Houston. This was probably 10 years ago. Hot and steamy. I mean, the ball... They had uh, hit their shots on this par three, and they didn't even hit the green. And so they said, okay, Wilshimer, it's all up to you. I, I had a storm raging in my gut, like, oh, no, everyone's watching. You know, they had like a, a car that they were going to give away if you got a hole in one, and all that little gallery over there, like, yeah, right. They want me to do this? Oh, no. So I go to tee up my ball, and all of a sudden, like a gust of wind comes behind me. And when I tee up the ball, it really started howling. Like the wind came up strong, and so I, I kind of got my, my grip, and I swung, and I kid you not, I was maybe six feet from the hole. Now, that's not very good for some of the golfers, but for me, it was a miracle. I was like, thank you, Lord. But as soon as the ball hit the green, the wind died down. And as, I'm, as I hit that shot and watch it, I humbly turned around to the guys just to make sure like they confirmed that it actually went on the green. And Burt Palmer says, what kind of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. I said, thanks, Burt. But you know, all of us go through storms. All of us experience the storms of life, either literally with some of the storms that are happening in Texas, on the Texas Gulf Coast. We know about storms here in the Panhandle. Storms that come really quickly and sometimes just vacate instantly. Just come and go. And we welcome the rain, of course. And you know, on the Sea of Galilee, where this incident happened, where Jesus was on the Sea of Galilee, storms come up often. There are weather instances, just like here and just like everywhere, that cause like a huge storm to come up. I've, I've taken tours twice over there, and each time it seems calm. You look out, and you see fishermen on the Sea of Galilee, and you think how serene. All of a sudden, a storm comes up instantly. It happens often. So this wasn't a, a, a unique occurrence. But you know, not only literally, but figuratively, there are storms of life all around us. Just watching the news, the situations that are going on in our country, the health issues in every area of the world, really. Political issues, economic issues. The storms continue to rage. So how can we kind of decipher that? And figure that out in the middle of these storms. Well, you're invited to look at this um, insert. 
here today. And if you're at home, you can look it up online. But also I'll have a little outline that will help us with this outward sign of kind of following where we're going. So if you look at that, the disciples start off with a vexing question. So here's this storm, right? This big old storm. And, and they look over and Jesus is sleeping on a cushion. Cushions aren't like all around there often. You know, I mean, this is like a long time ago. But he had a cushion. Isn't it interesting that they put that in? He had his pillow. Make sure he had a comfortable pillow so he could sleep wonderfully, right? But as he's sleeping, they start questioning, struggling, these vexing questions. Said, said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Don't you care? Those vexing questions seem to summon us in our time of need. In the middle of the storm, we question, God, what's going on here? Why is this happening to me, to my family, to my country? Why? Why now? As Christians, questions are healthy. You need to know that questions help lead us to truth. Questions can help percolate some of those ideas, bring them up, and really wrestle with them. We just don't take an idea and just say, okay, that's good. I want to encourage you to search the scriptures. Find out what your truth is. Find out what the Bible says. Find out what truth is. You know, Paul would go and preach and he would encourage people to look in the scriptures and see if what he says was true. Acts 17, 11, they searched the scriptures every day to see what Paul said was true. I would encourage you to do that here. We don't only tolerate questions. We celebrate them because they lead to deeper truth. But the vexing part is when we question and it leads to darkness. Where we question and we just say, eh, I just can't figure it out anymore. And that's a sad place to be in. Instead, I hope that our questions bring a deeper truth. God, don't you care? The good news is that God does care. Jesus answered in in Matthew 10, 10, he says, even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Even if you don't have very many. My interpretation at the end, that wasn't, Jesus didn't really say that. But uh, he cares about us. He continually shares about how much he cares about you and me in our storms. When we're questioning when we're struggling for, hopefully those questions will bring truth. Because as they were sharing that, Jesus gave affirmations. He said, he got up and he rebuked the wind and the waves. He said, quiet, be still. And then the wind actually did die down. It was completely calm. Wouldn't that be something to be there and to witness that? A person that you can see and know controlling the weather. Man, that that perplexes me. That would be so cool. But the Word of God really does that figuratively, really does that in our heart and our soul. I've witnessed it, and I've seen it happen, where we have this storm, and all of a sudden we read God's Word, and it gives calmness, and it literally calms the storm within our heart. See, Jesus was the Word. He was the Word of God that was made flesh. And so it makes sense that as he shares those words, it calms the storm. John 1, 4 to 5 says that in Jesus was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness hasn't overcome it. That light shines. And so the Word of God helps us in our darkness, affirms us in our lives, helps us. But the question is, what do we listen to? There's so much darkness that can seem to invade our light. But that light overcomes. Recently, during this COVID-19 quarantine time, and even though we're not really in quarantine, we still feel like we are. 
my family's been doing puzzles. And so my daughter uh, turns on K-Love. It's a Christian um, app, and you hear Christian music. And every song I hear, I was like, wow, that's the best song I've ever heard. What a great message. And then the next song, wow, that's an even better message. And these songs are just so uplifting, I feel like I'm in a worship service. I mean, it's that good sitting there doing a puzzle, listening. And I want to share with you one of the songs that has really been a blessing to me. And it's from Ryan Stevenson called In the Eye of the Storm. He says, in the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are my anchor. When my sails are torn, your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When the solid ground is falling out from from underneath my feet, when the black skies and my red eyes I can barely see, when I realize I've been sold out by my friends and my family, I can feel the rain reminding me that you remain in control in the eye of the storm. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are my anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. One other, one other verse here says, When my hopes and dreams are far from me and I'm running out of faith, I see the future I pictured slowly fade away. When the tears of pain and heartache are pouring down my face, I find my peace in Jesus' name. Simply listen to that song. It reminds me of how profound music can be. How profound held and, and all the songs that we sing here together can be for our souls. That we can listen to God's calm in a chaotic world. When that storm is going, we can hear Jesus saying to the storm, quiet, be still. But it takes faith. Jesus said to his disciples, after he calmed the storm, he looked at them and he said, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? God's calm summons us to faith, to believe that God has control, God has power, that God will prevail, that goodness and light will continue on. You know, God's people were enslaved. And God called them out after plagues. And and Moses stood up and and they ran to the Red Sea. And I mean, it was amazing all the miracles that the people of God received and could see and how God liberated them. And as they went to the Red Sea, God parted the sea and they crossed over. And then Pharaoh's army was all annihilated with the water. I mean, could you imagine these miracles? And they go in the wilderness. And for 40 years, God fed them by day and by night, led them by fire and smoke. I mean, just imagine all the things that they experienced. And finally, God brings them to the promised land and says, this is yours. I've been with you this whole time. Remember these miracles. Remember all that I did. I've claimed you as my people. You are the apple of my eye. And just like us, they said, who, me? You mean me? And they get afraid again. And they look out in the promised land and they see these giants. They say, oh, not us. In Joshua 1.9, God says to Joshua to tell the people, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be discouraged. Do not be terrified. For I am with you always. God is going to be with us. And we need to claim that we are God's people. That whatever might come, God has been with us in the past. God is with us now. And God holds the future. Because we have no fear. We don't need to fear what comes up. 
the disciples were terrified because they saw the holiness of Jesus. They said, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Wow. So you need to know that we don't control God. We have a healthy fear of God because God is other than us. God is bigger than the whole world, the whole universe. And God does what God wants to do. Yet, we don't have to fear because God is with us, not against us. No matter what might come, because God does control the weather, God controls the future, and God has authority over every situation. When I think about that control that God has, and the predicament that we're in, that our nation's in, you know, Job had everything going for him. He was having a great life, beautiful family, wonderful business, like the, living the perfect life. And then in a swoop, his business was gone, like all of his assets, resources. And then all of his, his family was gone. He was all alone. And, 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 and he didn't know what to do. So he simply lifted up his hands to God. And in Job 1.21 says, Lord... Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked all depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord taketh away. May the name of the Lord be praised. He praised God anyway. But then he got sick. In fact, he was in pain. Scripture says that he was in so much pain that he'd get like broken pottery in the ashes and scrape his arms. He was sick. It was gross. It was sad. It was painful. And his friends came and said, did, did you do this? Maybe it's sin in your life that caused this. He said, I don't think so. I, I just don't know. And he was vexing and questioning. had these vexing questions, these questions that just seemed to draw him deeper and deeper into despair. But he asked God. He didn't just leave it there. He said, God, give me this redemption. Give me light. No, let me know what's going on. Finally, in, in Job 38, God says, where were you when I formed the earth? Where were you when the storms come and I control the storms? Where were you? Know that I am in control. And it's then that Job says, oh yeah, even in these storms, outwardly, inwardly, with my family, with my business, with my health, with my spirituality, you are with me and you are God. And it's interesting that in Job 42, Job was restored twice what he had before. My friends, during these storms, I pray that our questions will be vexing. And we'll have permission to question, say, God, what's going on here? And it's healthy. But that won't lead to vain. It will lead to truth, affirming truth that will help us grow in our faith, knowing, knowing that we don't have to fear anything because God's in control. So I know that there's a storm brewing within this room and right now as you're watching because many of our English people are looking and they're saying, weather vain. So I did this on purpose, it's not a, t a typo. Weather vain is spelled V-A-N-E, right? But I hope that next time a weather incident comes, that maybe that will remind us that it is not in vain, that the storms of life are not in vain, that God is in control and God has claimed us as his own, that God cares about you and me, and that God has ultimate authority over whatever storm might come. That, my friends, is the good news of the gospel. And I pray that we'll always look to God as our weather vain. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that even in the storms of life, especially, especially when we're struggling in that darkness and we just don't know where to go, what to do, Lord, may we believe, may we trust in you, 
knowing that you are right with us during the storms. Lord, may we have faith. And Lord, I pray that you protect us, guide us, help us to be your people. May we be reminded every day, every minute, how much you love us, how much you have a, a plan and a purpose for our lives, even in the middle of pain, even in the middle of storms, even in the middle of struggle. Thank you, Lord, for your promise, that those promises are real and true. And Lord, may we depend on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So before we end today, I would like to share with you that next week we will have a very special Sunday. So next week we will be celebrating the sacraments. We haven't celebrated the sacraments since March 15th, but together we will celebrate them. And so you will be receiving, as you walk in next Sunday, your individual elements so that we can adhere to COVID-19 safe practices. And so what you'll do is you'll receive your communion elements, and then all together, as we would regularly have people come up and do this, you will be sitting in your seats. We'll undo the top, hold up the communion element, the wafer, and all together, we'll take Holy Communion from where we're at. And then we'll all together drink of the juice together. And so I hope that you prepare for that. Uh, we're looking forward to this Holy Sacrament. But also, we want to give an altar call next Sunday. We haven't had any altar calls because we want to be very safe. But if you're at home or if you're here, or wherever you are, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior... You're welcome to do that, and then you can come forward, and you can share that with the congregation. Share that with others. If maybe you would like to be baptized into, this, into the church, if maybe you have had a child these last couple months, and you would like to baptize your child, you are welcome to do that. Or if you want to simply join this church, maybe during this time you have seen a need for community. Maybe you see that your kids need a good place to, to be involved you're invited to join our church next Sunday. So again, next Sunday, we will be celebrating the elements, which is Holy Communion, and we'll have an altar call. If anyone would like to join the church, be baptized, or accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, you're welcome to do that. So we're looking forward to next Sunday. And I want to remind you that these sacraments are outward signs of an inward grace. Baptism doesn't save us. We just simply follow the Lord through baptism. Jesus saved us one and all. And the Holy Sacrament of Communion is an outward sign where we say yes to Jesus once again. But we do these because Christ commanded us to do them. The two things that we do to follow God as a means of grace. So I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. And I look forward to worshiping with you next Sunday online. And now, please stand as we sing our last song.
this week as we go out into the world and are faced with the many storms that are silent or raging, the storms that make us question why are we so afraid, let us be affirmed in the love that God has for each and every one of us. And let us rest assured in the control that we know he has. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. Amen.